Hey everyone, this is Haley from Cartooners, and today I have another Steam Years theory I would like to talk about. This time, I would like to talk about Rose Quartz and what makes her special. Of course, she has recently been a huge topic of debate regarding her innocence or not over Pink Diamond Shattering. And after the trial, she can be possibly seen in a more positive light. But many theorists, this channel included, have speculated about who did what, and at this moment, there is no one clear answer. So to change things up, let's talk about Rose Quartz as a specific type of gem, and not just a singular character that we all know in the show. And of course, we do know that there are many more Rose Quartzes in existence, but after the rebellion, all Rose Quartz gems were poofed and bubbled as punishment for Rose Quartz's crimes against the diamonds. But from what we have seen from the original leader of the Crystal Gems and her son Steven, we can apply this to the rest of their kind. So, what makes them special? Well, this is probably no surprise, but Rose Quartzes are the only gems so far that can manipulate organic materials. This is seen in many of Steven's powers. He's able to grow plant minions like the Watermelon Stevens and Pumpkin Dog, heal organic life, and even resurrect organic beings like he did with Lars and Rose did with Lion. All their gems we have seen so far either have powers that are physical weapons, some sort of elemental attack, the manipulation of compounds, or some sort of attack that does not affect humans at all. Let's look over some of these specifically, just in case you would like a refresher. Peridot has Ferrokinesis, and Lapis and Aquamarine have Hydrokinesis, with Lapis seemingly being able to manipulate water to a much larger degree. In both of these instances, this is not the manipulation of organic materials. Furthermore, with the introduction of the diamond's powers, we once again see that all gem's powers except for Rose Quartz's are not specialized for organic beings. Blue Diamond has Empathy powers, which is called Radiated Pathokinesis on the Steam Years Wiki. She can cause gems all around her to suddenly feel great sadness, causing them to cry, but it does not affect humans at all. And Yellow Diamond's Electrokinesis is powerful enough to immediately proof a gem, just like a gem destabilizer. We haven't seen it used directly on a human yet, but it looks pretty powerful, so I'd be surprised if it had no effect on them at all. But that is definitely possible, because gem destabilizers cannot hurt humans. So with all this in mind, she is the only one to be able to fundamentally change organic things. Besides with resurrection as seen with Lars or Lion, we've also seen her imbue moss with her essence. This makes a rose quartz gem incredibly unique, and it makes little sense because gems are totally inorganic. So such a coincidence is pretty incredible, unless you come to the conclusion that these gems were made specifically to deal with organic life. As we know, gems are a race that conquers planets, so it is very much likely that throughout their conquest across the galaxy, they came into contact with other organic beings, perhaps some of them that were even similar to humans. We don't know the process of making a gem exactly, as in how the drills take rocks and turn them into gems. But my guess is that however gems are created, there is some control on how they turn out via the colorful goo described in the Guide to the Crystal Gems book. This goo probably contains the necessary code to program a gem to the kindergartner specifications. After all, each gem was created with a specific purpose in mind, and that mostly came about due to the diamonds or the creators of gem kind wanting different types of gems to specialize in certain things. And with this came a lot of trial and error before each type of gem was perfected, and as gem kind conquered more and more planets, they created certain gems to fit their continually changing needs, and once they encountered organic life, they needed a type of gem that had powers that can control or manipulate these new beings, thus bringing about the creation of a rose quartz. Possibly to create rose quartzes, soil from a planet with organic life is needed, or the colorful goo contains organic materials, making a rose quartz in fact partially organic in the first place. This would further explain their connection to humans. Many have guessed that they were originally the caretakers of the Zoomin. In fact, they were probably the ones responsible for the creation of the fruit we see on the trees at Pink Diamond Zoo. This type of gem seems to be the only one that could deal with humans naturally, which explains Rose's fascination with Earth and the human species, and eventually her love for Greg. As we know, she made Steven by shapeshifting a womb. But what if she was the only gem who could have actually been able to create a successful gem-human hybrid? This might seem crazy, but after everything I described about other gems, they have a lot less to do with humans than Rose Quartz. Perhaps there was something else besides shapeshifting a womb that helped to create Steven, something that only a Rose Quartz had within them naturally. Of course, there is no indication of this yet, so that is just total speculation. But I think things would be really interesting if the only hybrids that could occur are between a human and a Rose Quartz. The thing is, is that Rose Quartzes also have a variety of other abilities not seen in other gems so far. 
Their shield can defend against even the most powerful attacks. Their healing can also fix inorganic objects, like gems. And they can even make a bubble shield and can control their descent. So while they may have been originally created to deal with organic beings, they also work really well in the battlefield. After all, they are a type of quartz, and as we know, all quartzes are soldiers. They're probably one of the most useful gems out there, so keeping them bubbled or shattering them is truly a waste of a lot of potential. Now for my final topic, I pose the question if our Rose Quartz is different from other Rose Quartz gems. Besides the fact that she was the leader of the rebellion, we have little indication that she was anything but a typical Rose Quartz gem. She has been referred to as just a shallow strata gem, meaning she is nothing special. One thing I would like to point out is, however, as some people have noticed, is that on a shirt with all the gems of the main crystal gems, something is a bit off. Here we can see Shirashu in a soundtrack release event for Stevie Years wearing this shirt. And we can clearly see Pearl, Ruby, Sapphire, and Amethyst gems. So that leaves the gem in the upper right corner, the Rose Quartz gem. But this gem is not like the ones we saw in That Will Be All. This gem has a pointed bottom, making it different from the others. Does this lie the source of why our Rose Quartz affected from Homeworld? Or maybe, is she Pink Diamond? Okay, maybe not, but perhaps it was just that this shirt was designed before the shape of a Rose Quartz gem was made. There is a chance that this was intentional, however, and if it was, then many new questions can be formed. Pink Diamond's true identity reveal aside, I would like to know your thoughts on this topic. Do you think Rose Quartz gems are really unique, and were designed specifically to deal with organic life, or was it just a coincidence? Tell me down in the comments section below. I would like to thank Jack Sodas for giving me many of the ideas for this script. And as always, many thanks to our Patreon supporters. New patrons include Pierre and Paoro Borla. Sorry if I said that wrong. If you would like a shoutout like this, then please consider becoming a patron. Soon we shall be rolling out a bunch of new rewards, so stay tuned for that. Thank you guys for watching.